Right now, as you know, we're doing one of these virtual pilgrimage paths in France with Patrick Vidal, and it's it's going very well. People are loving it. It's it's motivational. It's getting people out walking. Um, it's getting people to learn about the country, and so people are really really enjoying it. And um, you know, Italy next month, and with you guys in March. What I've seen and what I the very little I know, I you know, it sounds amazing and just so much interesting influence. I know Tina, you talked to me about how like the food, for example, is and I think maybe Sasha, you've mentioned it too, just how it's such a mix of all the cultures around you and all the different influences. Can you talk to about talk a little bit about what, what would you say about the food and even the wine? I, I want to try some Slovenian wine. Yeah, so we lie in the middle of Europe. A lot of people don't usually know so much about Slovenia, but we lie in the middle of Europe and we are bordering so many different countries and also cultures. Um, even if we're only the size of New Jersey, so very small with only 2 million people, we have borders surrounding us with Italy, Austria, Hungary, and Croatia. But thinking of it, you think Italy, it's Romanic culture. Then you have Austria with Germanic culture. Then we have Hungary with Hungarian influence. And of course, you also have the Croatia with Croatian or more of a Balkan influence coming from that part of the world. And this is all seen in the way people behave, in our language, in our dialect, um, in our architecture, the way we build houses, also in the way we behave in different parts of our country. But the most significant change is definitely in the cuisine. So. If you go from one region to another, cuisine can change from sausages and sauerkraut to pasta, to grilled meats with all kinds of um, spicy sauces. And then it finishes up with amazing desserts um, and soups like goulash soup um, or something similar. And same goes for the wine. We are not a very well-known country for the wine, but I think that's a shame because we should be. And maybe Sasha can mention something about Slovenian wines. Well, no, it's it's just a big surprise for people who come here to when they taste Slovenian wines and they go, oh, this is better than I've had in Spain, Portugal, Italy, France, whatever. Even France was. Oh, yeah. so I, know, I know it's painful, Chris. I know it is, but <laughs> it's we make some pretty darn good wines here. And um, are orange wines? Did orange wines originate in Slovenia, or was it Georgia? No. No, no, no. Georgia, Georgia is where it starts, but orange wines are a trend. It uh, may not last very long. Okay. And I've never had I've Georgia, never had any actually. I mean, isn't it just more of a almost like a rose that's orange? <laughs> um, with all due respect to the winemakers that do what they do with their, you know, with the grapes and everything. I, I respect them deeply. Uh, but it's such an acquired taste. Um it's, it doesn't really go along with the rosé type wines. It's more, oh. I, whenever I've had them, it's, it's, it's more towards a fortified, like a port oh. kind of a, oh. a, more a relative of a port. Oh, wow. A of a, of a rosé. Okay. I tip my hat to every winemaker. I've, I've, we've been along the way of, of how wine is produced. <laughs> okay, that, I'm interested. By the way, did did you pass your W your WSET? Did you take? I the have no idea. I just got an email from the guy who is um, championing that thing um, this weekend. He was saying that uh, so it's a London-based organization. Right, I did it. I took it. What day did you take it? Because I took it uh, the test uh, uh, the sixth. Sixth uh... of December. No, this month. I took it two no, weeks I ago. It. I did it before. Oh, you did? I did it before yeah. New Year's and no, on, no info yet. On the 15th, oh. I, I think it was December 15th. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm absolutely. <laughs> okay. So for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, I, uh, Sasha and I both did the, this, it's a it's a wine course, WSET, it's run by London. Um, and we did the level two, both of us. And I took mine the beginning, the first week of January. And it was just shocking to me that it said, you'll find out in 10 to 12 weeks. <laughs> Weeks, weeks. Yeah, yeah. Well, I find ridiculous because it's it's online. I mean, it's got to be instantaneous. They know if you passed or failed. But wh why does it take ten to twelve How weeks? Fantastic things we got as samples and just mind-boggling good. Yeah, yeah. I had some good. I had some good ones too. Yeah. Same stuff. Yeah, I don't know. 
Maybe. Did you get this shoebox full of little samples? Yeah, their samples were a bit bigger. I saw those bottles. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Did you really get bigger samples? <laughs> Everything's bigger in the United States, you know? Bigger wow. cars. Yeah. Well, so, so I, bigger, bigger glasses of glass. wine. No, but it was, I think it was the same thing because in the US, when you serve a, a glass of wine, it's an actual glass of wine. And in Europe, it's usually one deciliter of wine, you know. No reason, yeah. That's been a common question when we did tours, you know. Oh, really? Why is the glass half full? Because we're like, yeah, that's how we serve wine over here per deciliter. Yeah, civilized not way, not yeah. glass. Yeah, even, even coffee comes in like this. You know, you this know size. coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, a big good question. I, I have a question about your coffee. What is your coffee like? Is it good? Is it or is it French? <laughs> No, it's, it's Italian. Good. It's Italian. It's, it's but we Italian. call no, yeah, we we call it Turkish. Turkish yeah, Turkish, we call it is, Turkish. Uh, it's not French, Chris. No. Oh, good. Thank goodness. Yeah. French coffee. I've seen, seen enough of France. Uh, it's not French. <laughs> no, well, and you know, French coffee. It's funny because I think a lot of people when they travel to France, they're like they expect the the coffee should be good because you get this French roast everywhere, right? Yeah. French coffee is not good it's it's changing if you're in paris or bigger cities and you know and you go and it's pretty much run by like australians and italians that, that make the better coffee <laughs> but the, the the basic brasserie the basic cafe it, it's not very good um yeah and it's just from what i understand there's like a mafia in Auvergne, which is in the south of france that they're they dictate what kind of beans are brought in or something they need the they need the italian mafia to take it over apparently I did. Well, I guess I guess the Slovenian mafia is doing pretty well because they're connected with the Italians. Ah, uh, okay. Basically, well, I mean, sometimes with with the French coffee, the way we would describe it is you would take a cup of boiling water, <laughs> put a coffee bean on a string, and then you kind of spin it around. <laughs> you're not even dipping it in; you're spinning it around the cup. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. I agree. It's just it's always horrible. Wait, that coffee is a waste of time. You might just as well have tea. I've heard it described as donkey piss. <laughs> oh, touche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's changing. It's changing, you know, but it, it's shocking for France because the food is so important, right? And the cuisine and so on. And, and to have the, the coffee not be that great, it's to me, it's it seems crazy. Anyway, back to Slovenia, back to Slovenia. You mentioned too that um, Slovenia is often likened to Switzerland or New Zealand and, and obviously the mountains, you know, for sure. But like, um, is that is it more the terrain that you mentioned that? Yeah, well, it's it's hilly. It's very diverse in terms of the landscape changes as you travel east to west, south to north. Um, for example, the area where we are and uh, this where we are going to take this virtual yeah. tour. Uh, so the northwestern part of Slovenia, it's Alps, Julian Alps. Um, yeah. And then as you go towards east east yeah uh it's panonian <laughs> plain flat um while down south southwestern um exit we have ac actually an exit to the adriatic sea and you can do that in one day well yeah. but actually you can do if you drive you can be around slovenia in like three hours is that like a valley like going down south is that like a valley of some sort no, or the basin no, actually it opens basin. up yeah it's, the basin it's, opens yeah. up it's the edge yeah. of the alps and then it just huh. sort of yeah. Yeah. flattens out and no uh, I mean, down south are those rolling hills as yeah. we say but yeah it's, it just gets flatter and this is uh, another one of those interesting crossroads you know you have climates alpine continental mediterranean again another crossroad that meets right here and again it adds to the variety um i would say probably on such a small scale there's there's very little countries that have so much variety. Yeah. There's so much going yeah. on on such a small yeah. scale. Because here we even recommend when we do tours, we recommend not to have naps because <laughs> people might feel that they woke up in an entirely different country. <laughs> I don't know. Even well, our you... languages, it's the same thing. We have 46 listed dialects in the country. Wow. So Wow. Almost from village to village, people speak differently. No, almost. But it, they, yeah, do. They, they do. do. They do. No. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So now the three of you, uh -huh. did you all grow up in the same area or very different? Okay, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you Minor say differences, but even when we talk to each other, there are these details. Speak being a native speaker, obviously, that you pick up between the yeah. three of us. 
and we are within what a 10 ish 12 ish kilometer radius, radius yeah. Something yeah. Like that. of each other interesting yeah yeah so uh, it's a nuance it's not an actual difference thing but you know you you okay. sense it you you hear it you you feel it and and Tina, you mentioned like the behavior. You said the behavior of people, like how people act in the culture. Like, how would you describe Slovenian don't. behavior? No, <laughs> don't go there. Don't go there. We're not stingy. We're not stingy. We're not stingy. Okay. Period. <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious. Is, I is there like a all this time with them? I'm really good. I should get an award or something. No. How would I explain the difference in behavior? Um, well, for example, this part of Slovenia where we are, we are very Austrian-like. We don't want to be Austrian, but because of our history, there are certain things. For example, we're very hardworking, we're very punctual, uh, we do things a certain way. You go down towards the coastline where there's more Italian influence, yeah, things can be done tomorrow as well. Take it easy, manana, you know, siesta um people are more laid back more relaxed um let's say some of the most family disputes you know influence from the balkan peninsula is in the eastern corner of slovenia so okay. and you know those are just some of the i would say um behavioral differences behavioral yeah. um, changes but yeah. i would say generally how i would describe a slovenian mellow. we're very mellow we can't even curse properly. Why? <laughs> what does that mean? F, the, yeah. When you when you swear, the F word is common, isn't it? Yeah. It does not exist in our language. Nothing like that? Yeah, we do have. Uh, yes, but it's more of a... Um, but our... It, no, it's... Yeah, our F word is... And what does that mean? Don't, don't eat potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it actually translates to 300 hairy bears. <laughs> oh, that's right. I remember you saying that. <gasps> wow, that's heavy. That's yeah, heavy. Erwin has a few more that are really. No, 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 no. Come on. Uh, no, no. Next time. Erwin yeah, wants yeah. to make a good first impression. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just so oh, you're oh, yes. <laughs> okay, I can just add. He's a well behaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to. I'm, tr I'm doing my best. Um, let's just say that our curses are influenced by. Mother southern mother. languages okay croatian bosnian serbian yeah and this is where we picked mm -hmm. the f words and all uh, the ones from, uh, i see the right the right the, so ones, the, proper, the, the proper one the ones that you in, when you use them when you intend to insult someone you go with the uh, south ones yeah okay all right and so they don't have translation into slovenian language yeah right no, which is probably a good thing um so um on the along the line of language how how many languages do the average slovenian speak all <laughs> two, two, three. Yeah. yeah if we don't count slovenian but i would say we speak most most three. of us english german italian and croatian, croatian. okay those would be the majority then you have some varieties some people french some people spanish russian um russian is kind of getting back into moat into fashion it wasn't for a while um but i would say french is quite popular in the recent years oh why do you think um more and more french visitors um when european union started and when we became a member um a lot more french decided to maybe venture out their own countries and go and visit well, simply huh? the yeah. well. there is one big lover of slovenia actually that we all know patrick patrick <laughs> just tell you that one french who came for a visit to slovenia was napoleon bonaparte back uh, in the day. and uh, we in slovenia love him really he gave us our language back uh, books yeah poetry really yeah. really well, yeah and we He's have a, a french revolution square in the capital city so yeah we have the not only square we have a monument there's the a monument dedicated to him in the capital yeah. and there's a bust of napoleon how many right how there. many capitals have a, a monument dedicated to napoleon in europe that's amazing uh -huh. yeah it's a, it's a long story but um his his influence and his work is much appreciated around here wow that's um, fascinating on another french note we also have the last king of france buried in slovenia all all, all the bourbon kings. all of the bourbon kings are buried in slovenia i did not know that 
Uh-huh. <laughs> We're more French than you think. <laughs> why? So why? Why there? Why are um, they buried there? There is a. Uh, I mean, they were exiled a bit. I believe it's a Franciscan monastery just outside of uh, town near the Italian border. Okay. And that makes sense. Were, I think one of the kings, the first one that was buried, probably one of the Louis, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was exiled to Italy and simply it came to be. Interesting. Well, because, you know, there's, there's been a long time link with the Franciscans and the, the French royals. Mm -hmm. I mean, since 15th century, at least. Um, the, yeah, way, 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 way back. So I, yeah. there was a there was an exile of some sort that was connected to a political mishap of whatever sort. But yeah, they are all, huh. all but one, I believe, are buried yeah. in, in Slovenia. No, that's fascinating. Yeah. That's a lot of French people don't know either. Ooh. So, yeah, oh, so right. Brag a little bit, you know. It's a good Jeopardy question. There are all the <laughs> French bourbon kings buried. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay. Oh, I got a hockey question. So I'm today. I have I have a hockey game to go to. They actually are playing during this pandemic. My kids are playing hockey. Um, they have to wear a mask under their helmets. What? Seriously? How is that Hold going? On. Hold yeah. on. There yeah. was a CCM um, thing going on their web page. Okay. With the with the hockey helmet with the grill. And they had a mask of some sort underneath. Yeah. So that was not a joke. That's an actual thing. Yeah. So they and wear so, the, the, the mask that they put behind their ears, or is it well, just like a visor I think, in front I think of they their... can. I think they can oh. choose. I I um I think so. My daughter has both. Um, my, both my girls play hockey. Um, and I think they both have chosen to wear the one that they can take down easily because the other one is attached and, to the grill, yeah, and yeah. it's hard for them to drink or you know what i mean so hockey's big in slovenia too I get, I, at least they get to play which is fantastic yeah. because we yeah. are now limited to pond hockey yeah. yeah and it's been now already fantastic though i mean months. it's fine it's good but yeah i mean it's it's just i don't know you know they, they each each kid was allowed two tickets to give away, you know, for parents or whoever to use. So just today, we got an email saying that because um, we have a home game, mm -hmm. and um, they said grandparents are allowed now. They just have to say who's four tickets per okay. who their grandchild is, and they can go in. But only the home games. Otherwise, away games, it's only two people per child or per player can, you know, come in. That's smart. Yeah. No, with us it's nothing. We don't exist as hockey players. Yeah, but hockey's been big though. Hockey's been big because I know Tina, your dad yeah. was a big hockey guy, yeah? Yeah, he played hockey for numerous years, was an Olympian, three Olympic games. Wow. In Sapporo, in Sarajevo, and in Innsbruck. My wow. uncle um, is in the Hockey Hall of Fame in Canada, in Toronto. Oh my gosh. And our boys play hockey now as well, so... Good line, good lineage. Yeah, this kind of goes. Um, but I wouldn't say just hockey. I think generally Slovenes, we are a big sports nation. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty much, it's interesting and fascinating that in every single sports, we're good. Wow. Um, no matter what it is. We're more winter sports, but we also do some of the summer. And maybe another thing for the French lovers. What do we say about the Tour de France of 2020? <sighs> Slovenia what? first place Slovenia second place <laughs> second place drum roll Slovenia that's what Slovenia <laughs> that's Welcome. awesome speaking of it's awesome. awesome well I have to say I um I'm excited to learn more about Slovenia I know so many more people don't America a lot of Americans don't know a lot about Slovenia so this is I, I'm excited to to help promote Slovenia, you know, maybe the tourist office will, will give you a job. <laughs> um, I love your optimism, Chris, but I think this, um, this, this promotional um, availability will end with us being thankful to you. Cause oh. our, yeah, cause our tourist office will say, eh, well done. Or, ah. or yeah. maybe not say anything at all. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I think what what what's really exciting about what we're doing is that, yeah, there's a lot of like virtual tours out there that are doing like you know 
a walk through the city or, you know, a specific focus, which is great. But this is like pretending you're on tour. No, and I that, that I, don't, I don't know how many people are doing this. There maybe are more, I have no idea. But so we're pretending we're on tour. The whole, the whole project is not only tourism, but also activity. So, it, you know, people are encouraged to, to walk, to move, to just like when, when I'm on tour, I'm, in, I'm the healthiest I, I ever am because I'm moving every day and I'm eating amazing food and I'm learning and I'm excited and I'm happy, you know, it's, um, it's a really, fun motivational and exciting experience for people yeah. especially right now and people people are loving it um and it's, we're doing. And it's not just for the people i think we can also tell everybody who signs in that it's also great for our own mental health or <laughs> for our brain functioning because we actually have a feeling that we are doing something it's been such a long time since all of us were on yeah. tour and we all love what we do and we just can't do it um, and this is really something that helps us out as well. Um, yeah, yeah. We just feel like, you know, we're doing something that's important, something that matters, um, yeah. and it's good for our brain, for our soul, for our mind. So, yeah. Definitely. So we're very thankful to you, Chris, for oh. including us into all of this. Well, we already got one sign up, as you know, and I know there's lots of people excited about it. Um, and I know we're having repeat signups from the France are signing up for, for Italy and the guy that signed up for, for yours is doing all of them. Um, anything else you want to add? Anything else you, you think people should know? Um, we were thinking about inviting people to our webpage just to give them um just give them a glimpse a glimpse, a glimpse of glimpse what because, to expect and yeah, because we have a few virtual tours yes we are what we do so and maybe yeah we'll even maybe you know convince them convince them to to go to maybe find out some more yeah well um, i'll make sure that i post that i'll put that on um the chocolate su suitcase website and then yeah. um when i when i get this cleaned up we take the dirty words out and i'll, <laughs> I'll put a link to your website <laughs> and oh chris we also um we would also like to have some information to add about this walk for our web page because we do have some zoom happy hours with some of our guests from the past and some Ooh. from from now and we're already promoting that as well so with them okay it's Great. not a lot of them but but i think some of them might be interested as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we'll make that we'll make that information available for sure. Yeah.